Let's start working on this notebook 30, where we'll take some data, and this is a text-based data sets that we'll take, and we'll create a spatial data. So we'll create a shape file, we'll create a geo package out of it. So we'll learn how to take text data and convert it to spatial data. We're going to be working with this data set from this website called GeoNames. GeoNames is a, a place that provides free gazetteer data. So they provide data for each country, and they have data sets on different places. So here, if you go to the free gazetteer data, you can download data set for each country. And this is a fairly large data set. The idea is for each country, you have a point location describing every place in that country. And what kind of place do they have? So if I scroll down here, there's a documentation here. And they have places, for example, they have country, state, and regions. So you have one feature for each state, region, city, etc. You have every stream and lake represented by a point location, park, city, road, you know, buildings, farm. All of these points in every country is mapped and you have a point location. And this is great if you are doing some mapping. This is a good free data set to get and you know have all the places for you. It's also great if you're building some sort of hierarchical lookup. If you want to say select your country, select your state, select your county, and so on, they have this hierarchical data that's available here. So I find it, you know, myself going to this data quite often when I'm working on a mapping project. And a lot of our participants also find it quite useful. One problem with this data set is, you know, once you get this, you get a text file which has, you know, all this data set. It's a tag separated values. And these files are too big. So we have in your data package, we have some of the files. So if you go to the data folder and geo names, we have three files here, ca.txt for Canada.txt, mx.txt for Mexico, and us.txt for US. So this text file contains all the places they have in the record for say US, Canada, and Mexico. If you open this file in a text editor, if you have a good text editor, it might be able to open it. If you try to import this data on QGIS or ArcGIS, it'll crash because the files are too big. It's got more than 2 million records. And the way a lot of GIS reads the file is even to display a single point, they need to go through the entire file, but since they are text files. For binary file, they're able to kind of navigate through this much easily. So this text files causes a problem. I remember once I was teaching a class and accidentally I double clicked on this file and my computer crashed, I had to reboot everything. It's just too big, right? So now we'll see if you have a very large data set, how do we get this and process it using GeoPandas? The target today is we want to create a map like this of all the mountains in the US. We'll take this data, we'll read it, we'll filter it to only the mountain features. So all the hills and mountains that are in the US, and we want to create a map like this and save it to a geo package. So let's start. I'm going to import all the libraries. We're going to import pandas as PD, GeoPandas as GPD. We first will work with the only US data set. So this is our path. So you can see I have the path data geonames us.txt. The format of the file is described in the geonames documentation here. And it says that this is a tab separated values. So each column is separated by a tab. Also, typically when you have a CSV or TSV file, the first row is the header. Here in the file, it says there's no header. The first row starts with data. So we will describe the column names. I just took the column name list from the documentation and said, these are the column names. And pd.eatcsv has a function to specify the column names. This is useful where you have a CSV file with no columns. So you can give an alternate argument which describes column names. So here we say read CSV. We say separator is tab. And these are the column names. Let's run this. And you can see the cell is running. It's going to take a few seconds, fairly large file, but pandas will be able to read this. And that, so you can see pandas was able to read it. And let's take a look at this. And you can see this. We could just preview this file. You can see there are 2.2 million rows and 19 columns in this data. Fairly large data frame. And you know we could just read it in a few seconds. We have this nice data frame where you can see that each feature has a name. It's called the lat long. So this is what we'll use to create a geometry out of this. This is right now just a text file. It's got some feature class. So this is a code that describes what type of feature it is. The country code, admin one, admin two, elevation, population, and so on. Right? So you have got all of these things. Let's do some data processing. As a goal is to create a, a map of mountains, we're going to apply a filter to select all the features for which are mountains. So back to the documentation of the data. 
we have this feature class P. So wherever the feature class value is T, that's what represents a mountain. So let's apply a filter. I'm going to take this data frame and I want to select all features where the feature class is equal to T. So the way we filter the data is we say TF and we need to write a filter. I want to select all rows where feature class is T, which are the mountains. So we first select the column. We say DF of feature class. And we need to say equals to T. So this is a text. So we just say that I want to select all the features where the value is T. Let's run this. So you can see we were able to apply a filter. And now from this 2 million rows, we were to select about 200,000 rows, which are all the mountain features. So we now have a data frame that we would like to save it to disk as a geospatial data format. But before that, again, I don't need all the columns. You know, I have 19 columns. Let's say I just want to select a subset of columns. So I want to select maybe this columns. So I'll give you a list of columns. I just want to select and keep only the name, latitude, longitude, DEM, and feature class. These are the kind of columns I want to keep. How would I do this? What is the function to apply this? So I'm going to just save it as filtered. How do I display or select only these columns from this filtered data frame? The two ways to do this, one was the lock thing. So if you want to refer to a column by its label, you can say dot lock, colon, so select all rows, comma, the list of columns, and or we can use the shorthand. So we can just say, use the indexing notation and say, give me, these are the list of columns that we want to select. And now if you see, you have only the columns that we wanted. So name, that long, then feature class. And so it's a nice clean data that we want to select. And this is what we've done here. We will now save it in this mountains data frame. This is the same thing what we done earlier. Now, this, the type of data that we have in this data frame, is still pandas data frame. Remember, we are still working with text files. So we just have a pandas data frame. How do we create a shapefile out of this? We have this the point data. We want to create a shapefile and use it in our GIS. So to create a shapefile, we need to first get to a geo data frame. And as we learned earlier, geo data frame is nothing but a pandas data frame with a geometry and a CRS. So we can say, what is geometry of each feature? Well, we can just say we have lat long column, create a point geometry from that. What's a CRS? Well, it's a lat long EPSG 4326. So since this is a very common thing for GIS people to do, there is a helper function that comes from GeoPandas. So we can use this function, GPD points from XY. This function takes the two column values that are in a, data, in a data frame and gives you a geometry column. So we can say G, GPD points from XY, take the longitude and latitude value. So this is in the order XY. And what we get is a geometry column. So you can see we just get geometries and that can be used as a geometry. And once we have the point geometries, we can say gpd.geodataframe, create a data frame take, by taking this mountains data frame, assigning a CRS and a geometry column. And that gives you a geodata frame. So let's see what happens here. So you can see same data frame that we had earlier, this one, but now we have an additional geometry column. And now this has become our geodata frame. Once you get to a geodata frame, you can save it to any format that is supported by GeoPandas. So any format supported by GDI, we can save it to. So let's just save it to disk. Writing files is simple. We have to say GDF2 file. So first we describe the path name. So we just say, I want to save it to this particular path and we can just save it. You can save it to any format that you want. GeoPandas will guess the format based on the extension. If you want to save, save it as a shape file, we can just say my output path is just a shape file. So I want to save it as a shape file. And we can just say GDF, which is my geodata frame to file. File name is whatever my output path and specify the encoding. Optionally, it'll be this by default and you can run it. So I'm going to run this now and it's going to now run it and save this data to a shape file. If you give .g package, it will be saved as a geo package. If you give .tab, it will be saved as a tab file and so on. So any format that's supported, you can just keep that file path and it'll get it turned to the disk. It'll take a few minutes to write. I already run this before with the geo package. So let's see what the geo package looks like. I'm going to open QGIS and in my output folder, I have the mountains.geo package. 
And you can see this is the map of all the mountains in the US. You can see now QGIS is able to load this because it's a binary file and it's able to kind of load it sequentially for the data that you need. But now from not being able to even open this file, we will filter it, create a binary file out of this and be able to create this nice map which has all the mountain features in the US. And same thing, once the shape file finishes, it's the same concept. The only thing if you see here, there's a warning. Column names longer than 10 characters will be truncated because shape file doesn't support any column names more than 10 letters. And that creates all sorts of issues when working with data sets. So GeoPackage doesn't have the limitation. That's why GeoPackage is a nice lossless format for data management. 